Okay, so here's a little bit of uh, behind the scenes insight. When you have a recipe blog, like we do, you have access to a bunch of metrics that you can track. So for instance, you can see which of your recipes are the most popular. To be honest, and undoubtedly to our detriment as a potentially more successful recipe blog, Ava and I don't really care very much about that. We like sharing recipes that we find fun and cool and interesting, and if all we cared about was clicks, we would just make carbonara every week. That being said, it's hard not to be aware as we're making our videos that some recipes are gonna be more popular than others. And there's one key indicator that we can always trust to assure us that uh, uh, a given recipe probably is not gonna be cooked by very many people. That's if it involves deep frying. Ugh. Sounds so sinful, it sounds so bad and evil. Deep frying. Now, before you click off because you've sworn off frying, give me a chance to make the case why more people, maybe all people, should fry more often at home. I totally understand why people don't wanna fry at home. I think that there are two main concerns that people have when they think about deep fried food. The first, of course, is health. Now, I'm not gonna make some wild claim that like fried food is super good for you or healthy for you. However, I do think that they're not as unhealthy as people think. The main concern with deep fried food is that the food absorbs a ton of extra oil. But you can read about tests where they fry a bunch of food in a certain measurement of oil and then they measure the oil again at the end and actually the absorption is shockingly low if the food is fried properly. Now, if you're the kind of person who has completely eliminated fried food from your life, you never order a side of french fries, you never touch a potato chip, then I guess, congratulations, you are winning. I'm by winning. But if you're like a normal person who occasionally does eat fried food of some sort, one thing is for sure, which is that in your own kitchen, where you have control over the ingredients, over the methods, and it's not just some teenager who's asleep at the fry station, homemade is definitely healthier than store-bought. The other big reason I think that people don't fry at home is for like logistical reasons. It seems difficult, it seems complicated, and I can understand why. The first and only time that I tried to deep fry something before I met Ava, I wanted to, I wanted to make um, fried pickle chips. If you've never had them before, they're amazing. And I found this recipe online that was just so ridiculous. It had me fill a giant pot with so, so, so much oil. I went out and bought a like special glass frying thermometer, which I never used again. I had such a hard time maintaining the temperature at the, the perfect range that the recipe said I needed to fry at. Long story short, after that, I decided I'm never going to fry again. And then I met Ava. If you've watched this channel much before, you've undoubtedly seen Ava deep fry a lot of things. And it was through her that I learned that frying was easy and simple. You don't need any special equipment. It's not just her. I'm surrounded by Italians who fry just as casually as you would pop some bread into a toaster every day. What's cool about this is that frying is a very simple and easy technique that because so few people actually exercise this skill, if you learn how to do it, you kind of have a culinary superpower. Do you know how awesome it is being the guy who brings arancini to a potluck instead of a casserole like everyone else? Ava told me that today she has a dish that she can make that is perfect for teaching how to fry at home. So that's what she's gonna do, and she's gonna go in depth on everything she knows about frying. Let's see what she has in mind. Okay, Ava, what are you gonna fry today? Everything, Harper. <laughs> no, but seriously, what are you gonna fry today? Everything. Ava, you said you had one dish you were gonna make. I'm going to make one dish, but in order to make this dish, Harper, I need to fry everything. Now, I don't see any kind of, like, crazy special equipment that you need here. Harper, because when you fry, you don't need any special equipment. You need just some oil. In this case, I'm going to use some flour oil, but you can use also what my mother used. She used uh, usually peanut oil. What about olive oil? 
Yes, there are several things that you need olive oil to fry them. An example can be, I don't know, everyone knows the pasta alla norma. When you fry the eggplants because you don't dry, you drain the eggplants and the oil, the eggplants will keep the oil. In that case, you want a very good olive oil. Generally speaking, a vegetable oil can be good. I don't like personally canola oli. Canola. Cannoli oil? Did you just say cannoli oil? I don't know oil? Also how to say it. <laughs> Cannola oil. I don't like it because in my opinion it smells too bad. Now what do you fry in? Depending on what you are going to fry, you can use or a pan or a pot. Usually you use the pot when you are going to fry, for example, arancini because they need to be sub submerged in the oil. All of them because they need to cook evenly. You use a pan when, for example, you need to fry the eggplants for uh, your parmigiana. They are a thin slice of vegetables that don't need really a big pot, a big deep pot. You can easily fry also in a pan. So let me ask you something. If you were to fry pickle chips that are about this big around and this thin, what would you fry in? I would use a pan. So you would not use a giant stock pot full of gallons of oil? No, you don't need that. Good to know. I'm starting to fry a thing that needs a deeper pot and a lot of oil. It's obvious that you can't fill your pot with oil because then something will go inside and you will risk that all the oil will come out of your pot. Now we need to heat the oil, so we need to give him uh, the time uh, to, to be warm, to be hot, at medium-high temperature. Another very important thing when you fry a tom is to understand that your oil should be hot, because in this way there is a, a sort of uh, temperature shock. Do you work? Sure. Okay, so your food will be, will seal all around and the oil doesn't go in. So do you need a thermometer to fry? No, Arper, I never used a thermometer in my life. When you need to fry your food, you will end up having, uh, for sure, uh, something uh, from that food that you can drop in the oil and see if the oil is hot. In this case, for example, I have some uh, breadcrumb. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to take just a little bit, like this, put in the oil. I'm looking for uh, a piece of bread crumb that as soon as I put there, it starts bubbling. Like that, uh, uh, nothing is really happening right now. Now our oil is ready because as soon as we drop the bread crumb, he came uh, up. Floated? Yes. So this is another sign that the oil is ready. Oh, I know what those are. These are the unique, uh, wonderful, uh, exceptional, uh, I don't know other words, uh, delicious uh, and more, crocchette di riso di Mamma Rosa. She made herself, I don't make, but if you want to know how to make them, we have a video, so watch the video and you will learn. Now, when you pour something in hot oil, please be careful because we don't want you burn your hands. So very gentle. And I'm going to use two fork to take them out of the oil. And why I'm using two fork? Because my mom, she always used two fork. So this is how I know I learned how to do this. But actually, if you have a spoon with oil, oil, oil. <laughs> if you have a spoon with the holes that uh, drain the oil, use also that. Right now, what I'm doing is check on my croquette di riso because uh, the, the part that touched the pot 
it will cook a little bit faster. So I try to turn them so they will be evenly cooked all the way around. How would you know that if the oil is too hot? It's too hot when the oil starts to splash everywhere. Believe me, you will understand if it's too hot. And all you need to do in that case is turn down the heat. As you can see, our crocchetti di riso are golden outside, which means that they are ready. And what we do, we drain them on a paper towel. So I'm sorry, I just want to make sure I am understanding this correctly. You have made Mama Rosa's crocchetti di riso a totally complete thing, but this is part of a bigger dish? Si, Arpero. Uh, is that polenta? Si, Arpero, this is polenta. So you made polenta and then let it harden into, oh, like a, like a polenta cake. Like a polenta cake. I'm not going to put all of them at once in the same oil, in the same pot. We don't want to overcrowd our pot because in this way, the temperature of the oil will be lower and we don't want. So when you're doing something like this, where you have a lot to cook, you would do it like in batches? If you are like my mama that she fries 200 crocodile de riso, you can't fry them all in one. So. You do step by step, I don't know, 10 at a time. Now, you're sure that this isn't something for me to just eat right now? I know, Arthur, they are saying, manja me, manja me, but not now. More polenta? That is not polenta, Arthur. What is that? Arthur, these are panelle. Oh, it's like a chickpea polenta, kind of. You made that in a video. I'll put a link up here. When you have a food like, uh, for example, uh, now panel, that they start to float, so one part is in the oil, the other part is out of the oil. It's very important that uh, you turn them so they will cook in the same way. And now is the moment to fry some very good vegetables. Now I'm going to use the pan to fry my vegetables and this because they will be in slice and I don't need a deep narrow pot, but I, I need the one that is uh, larger because they need space. I'm going to start with the eggplants. Uh, what I'm going to do with the eggplants is uh, flour them, then pass in uh, eggs, uh, breadcrumb, and fry. If you want uh, extra crispiness, uh, do it again. We go back into the egg and then breadcrumb. Fry carrots? Si, Alfred. Also, carrots can be fried. For our carrots, we will use just some good flour. Is there like a particular reason or like why you would choose to do one with just flour or one with egg or one with breadcrumb? Mm, okay, for the eggplants, yes, because these are cotolette di melanzane. So yes, cotolette di melanzane should be treated as a cutlet. For this, actually, I'm going uh, as my mood is telling me.
Once again, I'm just confirming this is all for one dish. CR, it is all for one dish. And for the peppers, I'm going to use a simple batter made with flour and water. Wow, that smells amazing. Do you want to try them? Can I finally try something? No. <laughs> <laughs> I just have to keep waiting and guessing what this is gonna be. Yeah. Okay, well, while I wait, how about a quick word from today's video sponsor? I agree. For too long, people have thought about deep frying as something for the elite, the restaurateurs. I can't fry myself at home. People have also felt that way about investing in fine art. Surely you need to be a millionaire to invest in art? That's not the case anymore, thanks to today's sponsor, Masterworks. Masterworks is a really cool platform that allows you to buy shares of famous works of art. We're talking by real artists like Banksy, people you go see in a museum. You don't have to buy the whole painting, but you can buy a share in one and take advantage of the rising price. Masterworks has distributed the proceeds of over $45 million in art sales to their investors, with 100% of exits yielding a positive net return. Now investing in this asset, which often outperforms the S&P 500, is available to all of us. Over 750,000 people have signed up with Masterworks to diversify their portfolio. If you're interested, the bad news is that there's a wait list, but the good news is that as a pasta grammarian, you can skip the line. Click the link down in the description below and you'll be able to start investing in fine art today. A big thank you to Masterworks for sponsoring today's video. Go check them out and help support the show. Are you serious? The other, apple and banana. I never used this before in my life and I don't know if I'm capable or not. Let's see. Uh, I wouldn't put it in your hand. Yeah, there you go, Ava. I don't know. Safety said, first. Mm, like that works. Mm -hmm. If you thought that the fruit is weird, way to see cookies. You're gonna fry amaretto cookies? I'm going to fry the amaretti. Now, the fried cookies are also going in the one dish. See? This isn't like a dessert to have after we eat the dish. No, these are part of the dish. This is not a white air polenta. This is semolino, which means semola, the flour. Semolino flour? Semolino flour, but the coarse one. Cooked with milk, sugar, and then we fry it. I'm going back to the pot because as you can see, I'm doing this in big chunks. So I need a deeper pot. For our fried dish, we need some fish. I know, it's stupid, it sounds very silly, but it's real because I'm going to fry alici. Anchovies, right? Anchovies are when they are under oil, sugar. When they are fresh, they are called alici. Eva, do your best impression of the Dessa fishmonger. Alici, alici, sardi, calamari, lacchialoni, palamate, sardi. kind of running out of space. Do you have much more to fry? Just the meat, Arbel. 
So you rocking both now? Yes, Harper. Now we play with two pots at the same time. We are doing some veal, turkey, chicken and sausage. Okay, so now that the meat's done, does that mean that that's everything? Not quite, Arthur, because I have uh, the last meat. Okay, so just a word of warning, the food that Ava's about to introduce uh, might make some people squeamish. It's a little bit graphic. You can uh, head over to this time code if you don't want to see it. Turns out that another clear indicator that a recipe is not going to be very popular is if it involves brains. Yep, there she is. Brain. Okay, what is it, goat? Uh, baby goat. Baby, uh, baby goat. Baby goat. Important distinction. Mmm. Now it's delicious. Come on. I know that it doesn't look very, very good appetizer right now, but believe me, it's one of the best meat in all the world. The technique to fry the brain is that before you need to boil it with uh, salted water, like if it's pasta. Do you ever fry fava beans? See, si, they are delicious. With a nice Chianti? No. You know, it really just looks like a big piece of fried chicken. I'll just tell myself that. It's just fried chicken. I bet that this is better than fried chicken. Then I bet, I know. <laughs> Maybe you noticed that I didn't add any salt to all of them. And the reason is that uh, the fried food should be salted at the end, when it's already ready. So is it time to try whatever this is? It's time to try it. So I obviously know what this is, but what is this? This dish has a name, and it's called Fritto Misto all'Italiana. Okay, I've heard of Fritto Misto before, but I've usually seen it at like a restaurant and it'll be, for instance, like just fish or something. Now, the real Fritto Mista Italiana Harper is a mix of everything, which means some meat, some vegetables, some fish, some sweet things. Then, as you said, you saw Fritto Mista sometimes can be just fish, can be just vegetables. With Fritto Mista Italiana, it's all together. And there are several also versions in Italy, like there is the Piedmont version, Ligurian version, the version from uh, Le Marche, the version from Napoli, from Sicily, from Calabria. Here we try to celebrate all of Italy and put some of every of this region. Well, this is kind of the perfect dish to uh, show how to fry a bunch of different kinds of food. As you said, this is a celebration not just of Italian food, but of fried food. <laughs> I have to try the brain, don't I? If you want, otherwise I will eat the brain. I'll, I'll give it a shot. So you go savory, Arpir. Mm -hmm. I go sweet. Is that the semola? This is the semolina. Looks pretty good. Buon, buon appetito. appetito. I learned something new about frying today. That they make also the brain taste good. Though. Yeah, yeah. I never liked brain before. That's not bad. 
That's not bad. That should be delicious. I'm drawing, uh, <laughs> thinking of your brain. You wanna switch? Please, please. Oh, wow. Mommy. Oh, wow. This is a wow. That's the nice thing about this. There's something for everyone. Oh, yeah, sure. It's like um, we don't fight. Everyone has something to eat. It's like it's pretty nice. Guys, we hope that maybe if you're someone who's always been scared to fry at home, that maybe this encourages you to give it a shot. If you do go home and fry something, then tag us in a picture on Instagram or Facebook at Pasta Grammar. We'd love to see what you fry up. All right, guys, we'll see you next time. Ciao. Ciao. Okay, I need to see what a fried cookie tastes like. A fried amaretti cookie. Frying makes everything better, including cookies.